Hello, I'm Gary Sensing. I'm Debbie's husband. And Debbie and Jim and Michelle have agreed that uh, I should uh, offer some words this morning. Would you bow with me, please? Our gracious and holy Heavenly Father, we thank you so very, very much that we were allowed to know John as father and father-in-law, grandpa and uncle. Father, we ask that you be with me to help me to hold my emotion to get through uh, this uh, talk this morning. I ask that you be with uh, Debbie and Jim as they reflect and we ask that you be with everybody in the family to recognize what a wonderful man that we got to enjoy. In Christ's name, pray, amen. John was about the toughest man I think I've ever known. John was one of nine children. He was the last surviving of those nine children. John's father died young. His mother had the nine children young. And, and uh, the way I understand the story is that John had to leave home and was raised away from the family. John speaks very, very highly of, of his mother. John went through some things. He joined the Navy young. He was shipwrecked, and he used to tell that story and said, and I couldn't swim. <laughs> Johnny Bill got sick about 16 years ago, and that really bothered him. Barb, of course, got sick, and they moved to North Carolina about 11 years ago. Joe passed two years ago. And he had to put up with me for 33 years. <coughs> when I would say anything about Debbie, which was the light of his world, he told me many times that I better enjoy it because I could do no better. First Peter 5, God gives grace to the humble. It's wet weather, so I'm going to paraphrase, okay? John was strong, humble man. And his strength was seen through that humility. My first experience with John, some 33 years ago, I was just date, starting to date Debbie, and I walk into her kitchen in Dalton City, and Debbie's, Debbie's crying, and she's telling me that her mother's sick, and she doesn't know what to do, and her parents are in Florida, and what is she going to do? And Debbie and I knew each other just well enough to know that she was a nurse and could get that time off. She said, well, I can get that time off. I said, fine. I picked up the phone and I made reservations and jumped on an airplane and went to Florida. And that was the first time that we'd ever flown. And we got down there, we met John, got unpacked, went to the hospital, saw Barbara, and Barbara was not doing a bit well. And whatever John Barbara said that she wanted, John was on his, he was moving before she got it out of her mouth. I said, this man loved his life. Jesus said four times in the Bible, he who humbles himself will be exalted. Jesus said that twice in Matthew and twice in Luke. And 
in the 33 years I knew him, uh, he put everybody else first. He was a servant. He had a servant attitude. And John, even into a week ago, was going every day to the post office to get my mail and bring that mail back to my office so that he could feel worthwhile. He would carry our uh, laundry to the dry cleaners. He would make it, his routine was to get up and to uh, go to the post office and get my mail and then come to the house and be sure that whatever Debbie needed from Walmart, he had a list of it and he'd go to Walmart and he'd walk Walmart and he'd come home with that list and then you saw high finance. Debbie and him was sitting dicker back and forth on who owed what, you know, and get that right. And then he would tell me, he says, I think that is a bargain over at Arby's. They got two fish, you know, two for eight dollars. He said, I think that's what I'm going to go do. John was always very servant oriented. He was married to Barb for 59 years and he waited on her and took care of her. He had four children. Always, when he was a young man, I understand he worked two or three jobs. At his death, he had 10 grandchildren and 19 great-grandchildren. And I want to try to explain to you the man John was. He has a granddaughter who's 14 years old, special needs. Lauren gave me this world with her twin sister Natalie at less than one pound. She only stayed in the oven uh, 24 weeks, six days. When she came out, she was less than 12 inches long, less than one pound. Her daddy could take his wedding ring slided up her arm all the way to the shoulder. Lauren has got several problems. At age 14, she's kind of frozen in that five-year-old mentality. We'd go to church, and Lauren sit right there beside him. Always happy. Always close to him. If she was in the room, all the other grandchildren, all the other children, all everybody knew to stay out of the way. But the Lord was going to be a dad to be his aunt. He loved him. He loved her. Lauren was a And then there's the Cubs. I don't know that there was anybody else in the family that was a Cubs fan, but John was. And thank goodness he lived long enough to see him win the championship. And they'd come in, and and he'd give, Tim would come in there and give him something from the Cardinals. He'd throw it back at him and say, I don't want that. But they all enjoyed him enjoying the Cubs win. John and I did not have an everyday serious relationship. John would say he wanted something done, and I'd get it done. I'd either get one of the boys to do it or one of the grandkids to do it, and we kidded back and forth. Very seldom were we very serious. But John sat me down two, three years ago, and he said, Gary, he said, I want to know whether or not I've been saved. I want to know whether or not I'm going to have I immediately went to 1 John 5 and 13. And that verse says that we can know. And it's a summary verse at the end of that whole group of chapters there where it's talking about uh, you can know that you're saved. And John and I went through and we talked about his life. And we talked about him hearing the word, knowing the word, and had he confessed and was he baptized, and we went through this whole thing. I said, John, I said, as far as I can tell, from 
my inability, I'm not God, but I can judge from what you told me that you can know that you've been saved. John never, not, never talked to me about it again. He said, that's just what I wanted to know. Hebrews 11, 1 says that we can have faith in those things not seen. I have faith. that my friend, my brother in Christ, is in heaven. And I can hear Barbara say, John, John, <laughs> we bow with you. Our gracious and only Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us this love of our lives. Father, we thank you that his influence on everybody that he came in contact with was always positive. Father, if he ever said a negative thing or did not look on the positive thing, to pick up on the positive here in life, I don't know what it was or when it was. Father, be with his family, be with his friends and those that he's left here on earth to enjoy the positive memory which he gave to each and every one of us. Christ, let me pray. Amen. That's all I have to say. Thank you. We're very blessed in this country to be able to have freedom due to the sacrifices that men and women have made for our country and in honor of your father's service to our country in the United States Navy. It's my honor to be able to present to you this flag from a grateful nation. Our weather's not real cooperative today. Our, um, our time here at the cemetery is going to be brief. And uh, this does conclude our services here at the gravesite. You are welcome to return to your cars whenever you wish. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. How are you guys doing?